So we have a, a slightly unusual presentation next, which is a video that was prepared in advance for us uh, from Alexei Turchin, um, who is a researcher in existential risks and uh, has been involved in the Russian transhumanist movement uh, since 2007. So we'll uh, have this video, and then after which we'll have a short break. Um, so after the video, please make your way to the back where we are currently setting up a few snacks. We'll have about a 10 minute break after this presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests of the conference, Redeeming Our Dead by Mormon Transhumanist Association. My name is Alexei Turchin, and the title of my presentation is You Only Live Twice, a computer simulation of the past could be used for the technological resurrection. The biggest problem for any person is his inevitable death. There is a pro question which is rarely asked. Could be death be reversed? One of the first who suggested the idea of the physical resurrection by technological means was Russian cosmist Nikolai Fedorov. However, he thought that the key to the resurrection is the preservation of the same art items. Now we understand that the key is likely information about the connectum of the human brain. In other words, death is the loss of the information and the resurrection is a reconstruction of the same information. Of course, there is assumed that the sameness of the information is enough for personal identity. The problem of the existence of the soul are out of the scope of my speech, and here I will concentrate only on the resurrection on the reconstruction of the information. I hope and expect that the problem of personal identity will be solved in the future when we will understand the brain and philosophy better. So we could define the technological resurrection as a reconstruction of the person based on the information about his and her personality. There are many possible ways to reconstruct information about human mind and achieve technological resurrection. And some of these ways need to be prepared when the person is alive. Other could be driven by future superintelligence. Maybe there are ways which depend on new physical discoveries or could use some wild things like quantum immortality or part resurrection. If we look on the ways which could be prepared now, next. This is cryonics, that is preservation of humans in nitrogen. That is digital immortality, that is collecting data about the person now for future reconstruction. That is plastination, that is preservation of brain slices in plastic. And also, in the future, it will be possible to scan already living brains. Next. So, the future super intelligence, that is advanced AI, which we will create one day, could be able to reconstruct even those people whose resurrection was not prepared. One of the ways to resurrect all the dead is to run a computer simulation of the whole humanity's history. As Bostrom and others suggested, in the future it will be possible to create advanced ancestral simulations in computers. Super intelligent AI could make them very similar to the real past by creating the whole humanity history simulation. You may think about something like Westworld TV series as a fictional example of such reconstruction. Such simulation will use all the data about the past, including internet archives, DNA samples, advanced nanotechnology-based archaeology, human memories, all written text, photos, and videos. This means that currently living people will be recreated in such simulation and in some sense resurrected. So it could be called resurrection of simulation, which is deliberately created just for this one goal to return to life all people who ever lived. The main technological problem of this simulation will be 
our uncertainty about our past. Next. So, superintendent's AI with example how we now could reconstruct uh, human appearance based on skull using some set of rules. Next. And there are many sources of data about the past. Next. And it could, and it could be used to create a whole humanity simulation. Next. And the whole setup of the resurrection simulation will consist of several steps. Uh, step one, uh, the future advanced AI collects all available data about the past. And step two is that this AI run the whole human history simulation using all known initial conditions. So this simulation starts in some arbitrary point in the past, probably like 5,000 years ago, then the region history started and we have enough information to run the simulation of the whole, whole humanity. And this simulation run until the last person dies in the real world, so it simulates all people who died. At, at, and step three is recording of the mind state of the person in the simulation at the moment of his death. And step four is also include that the simulation should skip the moment of unbearable suffering to make the simulation nicer and not create too much suffering just to resurrect people. And step five is that the whole, then the whole simulation is over. The AI has the approximate models of minds of most ever lived people. And now it can put them next into the afterlife, uh, which may look like religious expectations of the dead uh, people. So they and the next step will be that people who now moved from resurrection simulation to the simulated afterlife, they learn how to live the real life, will gradually learn everything about uh, this whole setup. Next. So, so different people could have different religious expectations about what they will see after death and different afterlife simulation will be needed for them. Next. Paul Almond suggested universal random mind generator, which could resurrect all possible minds if it will be run just once. So such random mind generator is output in a random, very long random file which in some branches of Everett and Multiverse will be just a computer program equal to, to the mind of a person and because they are random, the, in some branches of the Everett and Multiverse, these random files will be equal to the minds of people. So this idea, next is theoretically good, but it has some shortcomings. One of them is it will create a lot of sufferings because many minds, even most minds it will create, will be damaged. Another it may not work at all because uh, maybe the operating interpretation is just wrong. And also there is so called complex problem of the measured decline, which means that all minds created by this way will be very unprovable. But if you combine this idea of Paul Almond with uh, resurrection simulation discussed above, they are nicely stuck with each other because in that case we are not simulating random minds, but we simulate just random circumstances of people's life. Next. So, in that case, uh, 
it will provide so combining quantum randomness and resurrection simulation will help us to resurrect all possible people without creating unnecessary suffering minds. Also, there are some ethical problems of the resurrection simulations. First is the problem of unnecessary suffering of simulated minds, which is called mind crime. As I said above, it could be solved by turning off experience if the pain is too strong and just calculate the results or choices people did based on this type of experience. A second problem is religious expectation, but it also could be solved by a different form of afterlife. The third problem is uh, suicide, and some people just don't want to be resurrected. Uh, they decided to kill themselves and maybe not happy to find themselves alive again. But in most cases, people who committed suicide did it for some reasons. And we could, if we solve these reasons, like pain, unshared love, uh, a crisis, then people could live again or we could uh, just take a part of the person which want to live and continue it. And also there are people who are afraid to be resurrected by a hostile AI and they think that uh, there is a very small probability that hostile AI could uh, resurrect them and uh, torture them infinitely strong and for infinitely long time and just because it wrong, was wrongly programmed and they prefer just to blow up the mind with the brain with dynamite just to escape any chance of being resurrected by AI. And this is a legitimate concern, but it could be solved if we assume that benevolent AI are much more frequent in the universe. And in that case, they could use something which I call indexical uncertainty attacks. So they could create many copies of any mind. So any mind will be much more likely to appear in the simulation created by benevolent AI and then in hostile AIs, and even it could be used to save minds from the hell of hostile AIs by inducing indexical uncertainty about the location. And last objection is based on logic of average utilitarianism, and they could say that why resurrect past people, let's create new happy people, but people typically have strong interpersonal obligations, like to parents, children, and spouses. And if we take at least one real person, this person may want to resurrect her parents, these parents, their grandparents, and by induction, it would require all humanity resurrection. So we just can't resurrect just one person. If we start doing, we have to resurrect almost everybody. So, you only live twice and maybe we're already in such type of resurrection simulation. Thank you for your attention.